They didn't have human language because nothing around at 2.3 million years ago we would call human. Before we were humans, we were Australopithecines. Some of the traits we carry around with us today, we literally have pulled through time and generations from our ancestry lines who were husbands of ours because all of these groups of hominids they weren't a straight line in branching off and staying like a tree branch. Everything bushes off. Evolution is bushing off most time. Our direct line going back to that time period, our direct ancestors would have also been Australopithecines. I love our closest cousins, the Neanderthals, and their closest cousins, the Denisophins. I am passionate about hominid evolution. Hello, hello, and thank you for joining me. This is Science Stuff with Brandy Beckett. Today, we are going to deviate a little bit from transgender issues. Yes, so have you noticed on my logo, I use the term, it's Brandy's World. In fact, my website is www.itsbrandysworld.com. So what does it mean, it's Brandy's World? You're a transgender activist and a dynamic public speaker, Brandy, but what is It's Brandy's World? Well, I am more than a transgender woman. I am more than a transgender activist. I am more than a YouTube personality. I am a complex onion. I have many layers. And I wanted to incorporate some of those layers with y'all. I want to share some of the knowledge I have, some of my experiences, some of my thoughts. I was talking with my husband last night and he reminded me of why I feel so passionate about speaking publicly and why I feel so passionately about advocating for transgender lives and transgender rights. And it got me to thinking, yeah, you know what? You're right. What fuels all of that is a passion. And a lot of that passion gets expressed for me in tangents. So if you've ever had a one-on-one -on -one conversation with me, you know, sometimes I'm going to go off topic on a little tangent because my little brain noticed a squirrel running by and I had to dive down a little rabbit hole and chase that squirrel of information. So sometimes I go off on tangents and I used to think of that as a weakness of myself and and when I'm working on my YouTube channel, I'm always trying really hard not to go off on a tangent and, and stay on topic and stay focused. <laughs> I have ADD and, <laughs> you know, attention deficit disorder. And it's hard to stay on focus lots of times. I also, I have to work around dyslexia. So... I don't always use a written out script because reading for me, lots of times the words will jumble around and it's not so fun and it's hard to keep up with. So I try to keep everything in my brain and I'll write things in my head because it's easier for me sometimes than writing it out and then reading it back to myself. I'll just learn it in my head. So my, my brain gets filled with lots of different uh, rabbit holes and I, I go down them lots of times and I used to think of that as as a fault of mine or as as a weakness and that but my husband reminded me last night you know what that's not it's it's actually a strength of mine 
he reminded me that on a whim, I can talk about some big issues and have solid points about them and take you on an interesting journey to get you to those conclusions of what I need to talk about down that tangent. I mean, for example, I'm, I'm a transgender activist and a public speaker, but that's not what I studied in college. I studied anthropology, specifically with the concentration on hominid evolution. And what that means is I studied the evolution of our species, of humans, and all of our cousins that went extinct because we are the only surviving human group of, of the great ape family, right? So I found that interesting that we have been separated from our closest non-extinct cousins, the gorillas and the bonobos and the chimpanzees for, you know, at least four and a half, five millions, probably closer to six or seven million years, our separation from the chimpanzee and bonobo group, from their ancestors and our ancestors, that separation was somewhere around five to seven million years. And our separation, the three of us were separated from the gorilla branch or the gorilla branch of ancestor primates branched away from us somewhere about eight to 10 million years ago. So at any rate, we have gorillas that have ancestry going back eight to 10 million years before they share common ancestors with their closest non-extinct cousins, the chimpanzees and bonobos and the homo sapiens sapiens. So think about it. The gorilla, from their point of view, if you look at gorillas, grandmothers, 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 grandmother going back as many grandmothers as you need to until that grandmother and our grandmother are the same grandmother. From their point of view, if they look back in their history of grandmothers, <laughs> they, that group of gorillas are just as closely related to the homo sapiens sapien, the humans, as they are to the chimpanzees and bonobos, right? Because when their ancestors separated from our ancestors, our ancestors and chimpanzees and bonobos ancestors were the same thing. We were the same group because we didn't separate till later in time. So back to my point of it's interesting that we are the only surviving group of these humans that part of the 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 human part of the great ape family right because there are five of the great apes that are not extinct on on the planet earth right they're living today. We can go visit all of them. You have the orangutans. The orangutans, they, they branched away from the common ancestry of all of the great apes somewhere around 13, 12, maybe even 11 million years ago, somewhere in that time period. They start doing their own thing with their own environments in their own source of living so they stop interbreeding and stop having the same you know group they became their own group so they break away around 13 million years ago and then the gorillas break away around 10 to 8 million years ago and then around five to seven million years ago chimpanzee bonobos because at that time when, when the separation between our ancestry line and the chimpanzee bonobo ancestry line start to branch away from each other, bonobo chimpanzees, they didn't branch away from each other until about 2.3 million years ago. So for a couple million years, they, they were still the same group, chimpanzee bonobos, right? They become a separate group 
from each other when the Congo River splits their environment. When that river starts to cut through this portion of Africa, what we call today Africa, but they didn't call it Africa at 2.3 million years ago because they didn't have human language because nothing around at 2.3 million years ago we would call human. Not that we found the closest thing that we find in time to 2.3 million years ago that we would call human would be some homo erectuses that we find in Africa around 1.9 million years ago. So somewhere in there we start getting some what we call australopithecines that kind of we it's hard for us to tell if we would call those things australopithecines or humans around the two million mark but at the 2.3 million mark when the bonobos and chimpanzees split from each other there's no such thing as a human all of our ancestry line at that time would have been considered um australopithecine as we would call them today i mean translates to like southern like us not necessarily us but like us so lots of distant distant cousins that we call australopithecines but in fact our direct line going back to that time period our direct ancestors would have also been australopithecines because there's not humans yet that in the shape that we call human, like our skull shape, our skeleton shape that we have in common with all of the humans that live, everything we agree this human from Homo erectus, Homo agaster, uh, Homo naledi, Homo neanderthal, Homo denisovan, all of the, you know, the archaic humans all of their ancestry line at some point were australopithecines, right? So what I'm saying is before we were humans, we were australopithecines. At 2.3 million years ago, we're australopithecines. In chimpanzees and bonobos, they are not australopithecines. Their ancestors, we were on different paths at that point. We were for over two millions, possibly up to three million years, we are on separate paths after 2.3 million years. So let's backtrack back to when our ancestors were the same, when the line converged, when this bushy trail of Homo sapiens, and then, you know, all of the Homo line, all of the humans, going back into all of the Australopithecines, going back to before australopithecines at about four, five million years, because that's the first things we start to see that we call australopithecines, like, like us, but not necessarily like chimpanzee bonobos, more closely to us than them. At about 4.4 million years ago, we have hard evidence of an australopithecine so this one we call Arty, Artipithecus. So Artipithecus, or Arty as we love to call it, is 4.4 million years old. And Arty is more closely configured to us humans than it is to modern chimpanzees or bonobos. So Arty at 4.4 million years ago is not what we would call primate, right? But if we go back, everything we find at like five to six million years, all of those fossils, all of those ancestors down there is is kind of where the, the intersection of ancestry for chimpanzees and bonobos and humans all meet somewhere around five to seven million years ago. 
right? We don't have all the pieces to the puzzle, so you can't make a perfect picture of our ancestry line, but we have all these amazing clues, like Artie from 4.4 million years ago. We have um, Australopithecus africanus from 2.2 million years ago. I think that's where, somewhere around there. We have our good friend Lucy, Australopithecus afarensis, and she's at 3.2 million years ago. So at 3 million years ago, we have Lucy, and check out Lucy. Oh, I love Lucy. So in 1974, Don Johansson and uh, uh, one of his students, and in fact later a bunch of his students, they start to discover all of these australopithecines in, in the Rift Valley of Africa. So they're like, whoa, look at this. These aren't primates, but they're very old. I mean, they didn't know immediately how old they were. We Lots of other scientists come in and, and they use these accurate tools to determine how old the fossils are based on, well, we're not going to get into all of the minutia about it, but later rest and understand radioactive dating is on multiple, multiple layers across multiple, multiple disciplines of science. And they have that stuff down. They understand through different methods, through luminosity, through how much light exposure has been there, through radioactive decay. They understand some radioactive decay has very long half-lives so they can measure pretty accurately and then they can pinpoint with other measuring tools. So, so many tools in the 21st century to get pretty accurate dates. I mean, lots of them will have an error rate of thousands, depending on, on the method they're using. It could be a few hundred years. It could be a few dozen years, depending if you're doing something that's very recent in history. But if you go back millions of years, your error rates, thousands of years, sometimes up to hundreds of thousands of years, depending on how far back you're going, depending on which measuring tools you're using in radiometric dating. So, rest assured, when we tell you the dates, it's not something that scientists are pulling out of their butts and going, oh yeah, we think that is about a million years old because, I don't know, a million years sounds good. That's not the case. There are scientists from across different fields looking at the evidence and measuring it with different tools to cross-reference their conclusions. So, they cross-reference to narrow down the air rates as well. Australopithecus afarensis, the, the, the namesake, the one Lucy, the one we, we have here from 1974. Lucy has been measured by so many different scientists so many different times and using so many different techniques that they have it to an air rate of within a few dozen thousands of years. So at three point, it's like it was 3.1886 or seven. I'm doing this by memory. Somewhere around there. I'll put it up in a minute and see how wrong I was. But somewhere around 3.188 million years with an error rate of a few thousand years. So we know she's somewhere around 3.2 million years old. We know this. We know that Australopithecus africanus, the tongue child, the one that Raymond Dart found in South Africa. We know that age pretty well too. And it slips me at the moment because I haven't looked it up and studied, but I think, I think um, the tongue child is 2.3. Yeah, I think 2.3 million years old. And that's a wonderful story too that we may get into how Raymond Dart uh, and, showed us this uh, this remarkable uh, skeleton here that he found in, in the early 1920s. Yeah, so. But at any rate, I love talking about these Australopithecines. I love talking about archaic humans. I love talking about the evolution of 
us humans. So stay tuned for more science stuff with Brandy Beckett. In future episodes, we will be talking a lot more about hominid evolution because it's a passion of mine. And that's what I want to bring to you. My husband reminded me that's where my strengths lie. My strengths lie in talking about my passions. And my passions stretch beyond transgender activism. Honestly, they do. I am passionate about hominid evolution. I love talking about hominid evolution, the Australopithecines, the archaic hominids, the archaic humans, the anatomically modern humans. I love our closest cousins, the Neanderthals, and their closest cousins, the Denisophins. Denisophins and Neanderthals, some of my favorite subjects to talk about, and we will talk about them in future episodes. And Homo naledi. Oh, I have such a place in my heart for Homo naledi. Mm. There's so, so many hominids I want to talk about. And I want to talk about our inner Australopithecine. I want to talk about our inner ape. I want to talk about our inner archaic hominid. I want to talk about the connections between our ancestry line genetically and physically and us. Some of the traits we carry around with us today, we literally have pulled through time and generations from our ancestry lines who were husbands of ours because all of these groups of hominids, they weren't a straight line in branching off and staying like a tree branch. Everything bushes off evolution is bushing off most times so yes there's interbreeding between all of these hominids we will talk about that we're going to talk about lots of early hominid activities and traits and behaviors and i'm just so excited to share some of these passions with you Oh yeah, we'll talk about some more general science too and science principles too, because I have a passion for large concepts. I love the macro of physics. I love to think about the cosmos as a whole and think about what it means to us and yeah, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about some basics of physics. We're going to talk about so many things on science stuff with Brandy Beckett. It's going to be great. <laughs> but I'm going to also tell you, we're going to go down some rabbit holes. We're going to go off on some tangents. But we're also going to share some interesting information and learn some fascinating facts. I am going to sign off for now. So... We'll leave you with this message. Love yourself, but more importantly, like yourself and treat people the way they want to be treated. Bye-bye for now.